Good morning and warm welcome to all the participants. Today we have the honor and the pleasure of having Dr. Sandeep Kumar Khurana with us. Sir is from ICAR, CIRB, HSR. And the topic chosen for deliberation today is an overview of milk bone zoonotic diseases. Let me invite Dr. Sudesh Rarotra on his behalf. It will be Dr. Surender uh, Paul who would be providing the formal introduction of our esteemed guest. Sir, please provide the introduction. Uh, thank you, Majid. Uh, a very good morning to all. I wel welcome you all in morning session of this third day of this 21 days faculty development program 2020. Today we have with us Dr. Sandeep Kumar Khurana, principal scientist, ICR Central Research Institute on uh, Buffalo, that is CIRB Ishar in Haryana. He will be delivering lecture on an overview of newborn zoonotic disease. It's my privilege to welcome you, sir. Before I request our today's MNE and uh, speaker to actually start the lecture, I take this opportunity to share a glimpse of his glorious and inspiring scientific research journey with all of us. Dr. S.K. Khurana has obtained his master and doctorate degree in veterinary public health and epidemiology from CCS HAU Hisar. He was awarded gold medal in year 1980 for attaining fourth position in pre-medical examination of Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. He was awarded university merit uh, scholarship by Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra and ICR merit scholarship during BVSC and animal husbandry. He was also recipient of ICR junior research fellowship for doing MBSc in veterinary public health and epidemiology. He was awarded honor of group leader by CCSHAU Hisar for outstanding work in NSS during the year 1980. He received Professor R. M. Sharma Memorial Award by AMI, that is Association of Microbiologists of India, for the best research paper in the field of microbiology in year 1986. He received Dr. K. S. Nair memorial award and medal for the best research paper in the field of bacteriology virology parasitology in indian veterinary journal in year 1998 he received dr cm sarihotra saman saman and citation uh, 2018 by dr cm singh endowment trust for outstanding work in the field of veterinary public health epidemiology and zoonosis besides he had been recipient of several other awards in several activities at college and university level during student life and also during service in various capacities as scientist. His area of interest include disease of bacterial, mycoplasmal and leptospiral origin, including the disease of genotic importance with special emphasis on epidemiology aspects, especially zero surveillance with an ob objective of prevention, control and eradication. His notable contribution in research include development of different ELISA for diagnostic of mycoplasma in equines. He and his team developed molecular diagnostics for rhodococcus equi infection in foals, including multiple, uh, multiplex PCR, established zero prevalence of brucellosis and IVR in different species of livestock in Haryana, which helped in formulating prevention and control strategies standardized different he also standardized uh, different immunodiagnostics or diagnostic of leptospiral infection in equines and found countrywide pre uh, prevalence of equines leptospirosis established prevalence and epidemiological pattern for important diseases of equines of different etiology he was mainly responsible for creating a very huge repository of equine serum samples at ICR NRCE ISAR. He has worked relentlessly on Glender since its re-emergence in 2006 and was at the forefront of detection, surveillance, monitoring and control of Glenders from several states of the country. He was involved in filing two patents on Glender diagnostics of which one is granted. Presently, he is working on buffalo diseases 
particularly on etiological and management aspects of buffalo calf mortality. More than half a crore rupees revenue was generated annually from contractual services. His effort in surveillance, monitoring, and control of equine disease throughout the country are noteworthy. noteworthy. He has uh, more than 100 research and review publications in national and international journal of repute. He has written and edited so scores of uh, books and manuals. He is editor, associate editor of several journals. He is on regular review panel of several high impact international journals besides being lead editor of special issues of research journals. I once again welcome you, sir, and request you to please share your research experience with all of us through your lecture. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Radotra and all the organizers who are relentlessly working for this 21 day training program. I could see that there are many participants and they are from diverse fields. The topic which I have chosen is an overview of milk bond, milk bond zoonotic diseases. This is a common topic and I have, I will not go into depth since all the audience and uh, all the participants are from uh, different fields. I will take it uh, many things very, very lightly and not go into the very deep scientific information. So, first of all, I would like to tell you, as you most of you might be knowing, what is zoonosis? Zoonosis is a group of the diseases which are shared between human beings and lower vertebrate animals. And this transmission is both ways means from animals to men and from men to animals. The diseases which are, which are transmitted from uh, animals to men are anthropozoonosis and reverse zoonosis or the zoo anthroponosis is opposite to that. That some diseases are transmitted from men to animals also. And these are studied in a branch of veterinary sciences, which is called veterinary public health, which is a common field between human medicine and veterinary, veterinary sciences and environmental part is also there so if when there is a disturbance in the balance uh, in the environmental uh, and in the environmental environmental processes the disease spreads from animal to human and vice versa and we think that many diseases they come from human to human like flu we uh, uh, if one person is having then it spreads to many, but this is uh, uh, this is not the uh, the only fact. More than sixty percent of the human diseases they come from animals directly or indirectly. Means they are zoonotic in nature, and most of the recent diseases which have come in last one de decade, three fourths of such infections have come from animals. Uh, in the livestock sector, different farm animals naturally carry a wide range of the zoonotic pathogens. And in dairy sector, zoonotic pathogens are normally present in dairy animals, raw milk and milk products, meat products. And the fauna, in the fauna, uh, farm environment, they are also present and they spread to human beings. And these zoonotic diseases can be transmitted to hum human beings in several ways. It is consumption of infected raw milk and coming in contact, contact with the dairy animals and their products and 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 coming in contact with the infected farm environment however the most of the milk born zoonosis they are required for consumption of the raw milk or the infected milk or the milk which has got post contamination means even if this has been pasteurized or sterilized and there is due to cross contamination some pathogen enter in this and then human consumption is there and this uh, becomes a zoonotic disease for human beings milk mobilosis are both a great public health uh, uh, public health problem and also economic having a great economic uh, importance and the level of awareness about the zoonotic diseases is very, very less. And the people 
common people and even the veterinarians and medical persons they don't they have a very meager knowledge about the zoonotic diseases that the diseases which come from animals to men mostly what are the sources of infection and their role you can have a look on this slide there could be different sources of these infections which which uh, which uh, constitute the milk milk born uh, zoonosis microorganisms can enter the milk from contact with the animals infected animals hides then utensils for mites etc and there are many many bacteria or many uh, microorganisms which are useful like lactobacillus they are used in food technology and some are used as probiotics but some organisms like pseudomonas acinetobacter they cause spoilers spoilage they are not the uh, uh, cause of the many fatal diseases but they spoil the milk and this milk is useless and then other uh, are the pathogens which cause diseases like listeria staphylococcus tuberculosis brucella and so many others so uh, the joint committee on milk hygiene classified milk borne zoonoses as an infection of animals that can be transmitted to men through milk the primary important primarily important microorganisms or bacteria which are transmitted through milk are tuberculosis brucellosis streptococcal infections staphylococcus cocal infections salmonellosis and q fever and some other are having lesser importance than this because they are less prevalent uh, uh, less prevalent uh, uh, less prevalent in terms of transmission through milk these are fmd anthrax tick borne encephalitis cough pox uh, leptospirosis listeriosis campylobacteriosis etc uh, the most important zoonotic disease which is transmitted through the milk is tuberculosis and mostly it it spreads to consumption of raw milk or the unpasteurized milk especially the children that take milk from the when when uh, when handling the animals they sometimes take raw milk directly from the from the teat while uh, uh, while mil while milking or uh, in rural areas this happens and the the most uh, common uh, tuberculous organism which causes tuberculosis in human beings is mycobacterium tuberculosis but the most common uh, this tuberculous organism in animals that is in cattle buffalo and sheep and goat is myco mycobacterium bovis in in this goat uh, the common is mycobacterium melitensis and through consumption of raw milk this mycobacterium uh, bovis is consumed and this causes disease about uh, 5 to 10% of the tuberculosis tuberculosis uh, cases they come to human beings through the consumption of uh, raw milk and this is causing a great uh, economic importance even some one avian type is this which can cause rarely disease in humans also but 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 that is very rare uh this figure may be surprising you can have a look in india 40% population is affected with tb you may not agree because you don't see the symptoms of uh, coughing or pneumonia or other pleurisy etc yes but this is the figure affected means uh, that 40% of the population is having tuberculous bacillus in their oral cavity or their mouth but they are not Uh, they are not tb patients because they they are called tb patients only when there are clinical symptoms mere presence of tuberculosis uh, tu tuberculosis bacillus or mycobacterium tuberculosis in human beings is not uh, is not sufficient to call a person affected uh, uh, to be to to be prone to tb so this is a figure of presence and the presence of tb organism is not Uh, is is not sufficient to cause tuberculous disease this is just infection not disease there are 22 lakh new cases every every year in india 5000 every day and 4 every minute 
and making a total of 140 lakhs of which 35 lakhs are highly infectious death rate 5 lakhs annually 1400 per day and one every minute and economic losses are of the tune of 3 billion dollars and mycobacterium bovis out of that that is which is coming from the consumption of milk is 5% of the global tb cases and this may go up to 10 to 15 percent in endemic countries. Endemic countries means where this disease is, uh, this disease is, has made an Aishi, like India, this in some cases, in some states, it can go up to 15 percent where pasteurization is, is not being practiced and raw milk is sometimes consumed. Uh, I could uh, see in one uh, Akhada where some Palwans, uh, means uh, this muscle men, were training near Delhi, and I I had examined their uh, I, uh, I I examined them, and I could see that many many of these pelvans were having um, diseases, especially tuberculosis and also brucellosis, because they were consuming raw milk to maintain their uh, uh, to have their good health. So this should this should not be there means uh, milk should always be boiled or should be taken pasteurized etc and this pasteurization process which was uh, means started by uh, sir louis pasteur was keeping in view the tuberculosis bacillus that uh, this uh, the pasteurization temperature the time and temperature combination is sufficient to kill all pathogens including mycobacterium tuberculosis the mycobacterium tuberculosis was the indicator organism in this and in uh, india the zoonotic tb that is mainly due to mycobacterium bovis and melatensis is very much underestimated and also not studied to that extent where it should be studied as i have already told that the cattle are the major source of milk uh, this milk born human infection Mycobacterium bovis is excreted in feces, urine, genital discharges also, in addition to coming through milk. And densely populated areas, animals raised under intensive system and poor housing makes this uh, situation more vulnerable for spread of uh, this tuberculosis. And during this season, that is winter season and ra ra rainy season, because animals huddle together, animals and man also uh, huddled together there is more chances of this getting this infection and uh, pasteurization significantly reduces this uh, uh, the transmission of this uh, transmission of this disease because this kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis and milch animals other than uh, other than buffaloes uh, are also buffalo and uh, Cows are also affected uh, due, due to this. An avian type of tube bacilli can also cause disease in human beings, but that is very, very rare. The symptoms include onset of parenchymal pulmonary infiltration, which, is, uh, which can be detected by X-ray examination. And there is cough, fever, fatigue, and weight loss. Incubation period is generally four to six, six weeks. There are many methods of uh, diagnosis, that is direct micros microscopic uh, test where, uh, where with the help of acid fast staining, the tuberculous bacillus is, uh, could be seen. Other are radiography, then tuberculin test, where in duration is uh, that purified protein derivative of uh, this uh, tuberculous bacillus is, uh, is intradermally injected and the induration is seen. Induration of more than 10 mm is considered positive, and less than 5 mm is considered negative. This is also called Mentox test. Then, uh, with the emergence of uh, drug resistance or antibiotic resistance in the present scenario, uh, due to its, its overuse and its use in different fields of uh, uh, means misuse also of antibiotics. Many drug resistant strains of tuberculosis have also uh, been uh, seen, which uh, 
are not affected, which are not, uh, which do not respond to the common antibiotics or the common therapy, which had been used for long for cure of uh, uh, cure of this tuberculosis. Earlier, conventionally, two drugs were uh, uh, used for uh, treatment of uh, tuberculosis since uh, you can say from our father's time, that is isoniazid and PAS, PAS. But these drugs are no longer effective, affected, effective because uh, of emergence of drug resistance or antibiotic resistance. Now new stains have emerged, which are called uh, XDR TB, that is extremely drug resistant TB, then MDR, multiple drug resistant TB, and then total TDR, TB, that is totally drug resistant, where no drug is effective. That is due to overuse, misuse of antibiotics and uh, its use in uh, this aquaculture, floriculture, horticulture, everywhere. The, this is causing multiple drug resistance. Then, uh, I, as I have already told earlier, this isoniazid and PAS were used, but now combined therapy of rifampicin erythromycin, azithromycin, etc. is being used. This is being tried. And for TDR, so far, no drug uh, has been found effective. Then prevention and control. The animal should be first tested, should be screened through tuberculin test, and suffering from tuberculosis should be isolated. And in this uh, advanced countries or in the uh, in many countries, these are just slaughtered. They are, but here we cannot uh, always afford this. Then we separate them and use for different purposes. Then just proper heat treatment or pasteurization that kills the mycobacterium tuberculosis. Overcrowding of the animals should be avoided, and this tuberculosis patient should be prohibited from handling the animals because this is both ways. Human tuberculosis can spread to this uh, this animals, and animal tuberculosis can spread to uh, humans. And proper disinfection of the farm and or premises should be done. On hard basis, uh, this uh, infected animal, then again, this uh, tuberculin testing should be done at the age of three months, then should be repeated three months uh, at the interval of three months. Feed gloves should be cleaned and thoroughly disinfected, and farm attendants should be checked for the presence of any tuberculous organism or any other disease also. Uh, other uh, very important milk bomb disease is brucellosis. This disease is very, very common among the animal handlers and veterinarians also. During their lifetime, uh, about 10% of the veterinarians or this uh, livestock handlers or VLDAs during their lifetime, 10% of them uh, have this brucellosis. And this brucellosis is brucellosis organism is also like tuberculosis. This is also an intracellular organism which requires a very long period of treatment like tuberculosis, that is more than six months. So consumption of raw milk uh, should not be there in any case. And one of this is this is one of the most common milk borne diseases, also named as Banks disease. You can see here on the slide there are several no names given in different areas. And uh, this is caused by Brucella, uh, Brucella, uh, Brucella abortus. Uh, Brucella organism, which is gram negative, non motile, non spore forming, uh, Coco bacillus bacteria. And this uh, lives inside the, inside the cell. So, this is an intracellular organism. That's why the drugs, uh, uh, drugs require a longer time for uh, its treatment. In cattle, this disease is also known as contagious abortion and infectious abortion. The annual loss due to human brucellosis is, is 30 million man days. This is a word over. And in India, cattle and buffaloes, rupees 240 million per year loss is there. And 
this is one of the most common bacterial rhinosis and over half a million new cases occur annually. And uh, about one to eight percent of the animals show is seroprevalence, so mostly cattle and buffaloes. This uh, spreads through raw milk or the or the uh, from the animal which has uh, abortion due to brucellosis and this uh, you can say the placental membranes uh, they they spread if this uh, carcass is not uh, disposed of properly human beings get the infection and this this the transmission is uh, means so easy that it can this this organism this uh, bacteria can penetrate even the intact skin so while handling the abortion cases the veterinarians should be very careful and the animal handlers should also be very careful they should always wear uh, the gloves while handling the abort uh, the cases of abortion in the animals that is mainly cattle buffaloes even sheep and goat also and the symptoms in human beings they are undulant fever undulant means there are um, there are waves of fever that for two days there is fever again for two three days there is a respite then for two three days again there is a fever there's a wave like means there is a uh, something like wave and uh, this uh, disease comes in the form of waves and this lasts for weeks months or even years and if it is um undiag gets undiagnosed uh, or it's undetected the disease uh, may lead to even even death and this is an occupational disease of animal handlers veterinarians slaughterhouse workers etc and some vaccines also which are used in animals they are live vaccines if they are by mistake injected to human beings they are accidentally injected they can cause disease in human beings also Here are the symptoms in human beings mostly are muscular pain and night sweating. There is sweating at night, fever. At first stage of the disease, septicemia occurs. That is, bacteria spreads in the bloodstream, and this uh, this is leading to fever and uh, sweating. Then migratory arthralgia. That is pain in the, in the joints from one joint to other. Uh, the tests which are used to diagnose this are uh, the most common is rose bengal plate test and uh, this disease is rarely fatal but uh, if uh, this goes undiagnosed in two percent of the human beings this may result into death because such diseases they come in no man's land that veterinarians also are which says they are not treating human beings they are not aware of the human aspect of this disease and the medical persons are also not aware of this, of this disease so this disease for long uh, time this may go undetected so we should be very careful if uh, we have handled a case of uh, abortion which and we are having the uh, after a few days we are having something like undulant fever or night sweating we should always suspect uh, uh, this brucellosis and go for early treatment for this. The diagnosis is through bird, bird culture uh, in the tiptoes growth, bone marrow culture, and histological evidence of granulomatous hepatitis is also there in advanced cases. Confirmation is by isolation and identification of the organism. And serology shows fourfold increase in the Titer of, of this brucella antibodies, which confirms this. Then STAT and CFT, that is a standard tube agglutination test and complement fixation test. And lately, uh, many ELISA are being used and PCR has also been used. But most important it's, is its uh, diagnosis. This should be diagnosed on the basis of history. And if we are not able to diagnose it properly, the disease goes for a very long period and ultimately could be fatal. And these are the slides showing this uh, agglutination in RBPT, that is Rose Bengal plate test, that uh, 
this shows agglutination test then other is the milk ring test there is formation of ring in a positive case the treatment in animals since the treatment is for a very long duration and the very high dose of antibiotic is required so this is very costly so treatment is and then animals is not practicable in men the, the this uh, the treatment is for about uh, uh, minimum 6 weeks with rifampicin and doxycycline or a combination of rifampicin and erythromycin and this is used for a long a long duration and uh, after this uh, means uh, full therapy is uh, given then again we check the titers at different intervals and unless we are very sure uh, that uh, the, there is a full treatment only then we uh, we stop the treatment then prevention and control is segregation of the infected heart to avoid cross infection and prop, there should be proper vaccination and uh, this uh, milk should be properly boiled or pasteurized for destruction of the organism then other important uh, disease or other milk bond disease is streptococcus streptococcus is the diseases caused by the genus streptococcus which are uh, means co uh, which are uh, cocoid organisms which occur in chains as you see, see in this photographs and a uh, photograph uh, the most common is streptococcus pyogenes or group d streptococcus which is also called enterococci and these uh, these cause the septic uh, sore throat and scarlet fever and the sources of our this enterococci especially they come from the fecal contamination or from milking machines or these fomites or through handlers also its uh, diagnosis is done by the cultural identification that is isolation and identification then serological testing different serological tests are there serotyping uh, the prevention and control is that like any other disease early diagnosis is the key to the proper treatment then personal hygiene and disinfection milk hygiene pasteurization and this the organism is also mastitis causing organism so control of mastitis the general measures to control mastitis should be taken so that this doesn't come into uh, in the milk and the, the human do not consume this other is the staphylococcal poisoning or staphylococcus uh, infections and the most common this staphylococcus agent is staphylococcus aureus this is also mastitis causing org organism that uh, in uh, in cattle buffalo and also other milk milch animals and the source is human handlers since the organism is normally present on the nose skin of hands wound pimples and boils and this disease also uh, it causes means boils in human beings and 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 this is quite a common uh, agent for cause of uh, mastitis and through raw milk this can be uh, taken by the human beings and this causes uh, multiple type of uh, syndromes food poisoning or toxic shock, shock syndrome is caused by its toxin and this is not con contagious toxins are not to me because they are not uh, means living organisms so they are not contagious however if there is a common source if many uh, people eat from the sa same source they can get uh, the infection from the same source and these enterotoxins which are formed in the food or food made of uh, the milk or the milk products even heating to the 100 degree centigrade for 30 minutes is not sufficient to kill this toxin and these toxins are even not hydrolyzed in the body by gastric gastric enzymes or in the gastric juices thus once the food product has been contaminated with the enterotoxin producing staphylococci this uh, toxin uh, cannot uh, be killed by cannot be means uh, cannot uh, cannot be cured by reheating the food or the digestive processes are also not protective and about 30 to 50 percent of all staphylococcus aureus strains 
they produce these toxins. There are different tentotoxin caused by uh, Staphylococcus aureus, A, B, C1, and so on. And the symptoms of this food poisoning caused by a aureus, they include nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, sweating, uh, prostration, etc. And how we can diagnose this on the basis of history of eating some contaminating foods and signs of symptoms, then cultural techniques, uh, including isolation and identification, serological methods, and some other methods. Prevention and control is adequate heating of the milk immediately before this toxin production. Because if the bacteria is killed before that, only if the once the toxins are produced, even heating will not be effective. Then adding adequate cooling immediately after production, then health education that is common for all, all the diseases. Other is very, very common and very, very fatal sometimes, salmonosis. And this is a type of ubiquitous, uh, ubiquitous type organism. There are many serovars of uh, genus, uh, of this uh, genus Salmonella. And most common or fatal is Salmonella typhi, which is causes typhus, typhoid fever in human beings. Other is Salmonella paratyphi, then this uh, Salmonella enteritis and well and well -tiverted. The sources are, of course, milk, which we are taking, then water, carriers, infected animals, arthropods, and several other reptiles also, they also carry the salmonella and they spread. Symptoms of typhoid fever, fever which is caused by salmonella typhi, that is uh, characterized by severe fever, enteritis, and ulcers in the intestines, pedomegaly, toxemia, etc. Other organisms, salmonella para paratyphi, causes paratyphoid fever and uh, salmonella food poisoning with nausea, vomiting. These are the common symptoms of uh, food poisoning, that is fever, diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, nausea, headache, overall body pain. That is, these are the common means, symptoms. Then sources of infection and board of transmission of salmonella. Salmonella has been isolated from the wide range of animals and their food products. Poultry, bovine, ovine, ovine means sheep, porcine, pig, category of pig, fishes, seafood, then poikilotherms means cold breaded animals like snakes, lizards. They are present everywhere and they can come uh, in our food chain, chain and uh, come to us. And milk is also a common, milk and eggs are also common source of this. Then known uh, typhoidal salmonella, which I have already told that welty vermin and enteritis, they come from ingestion of contaminated foods with bacteria, eggs, chicken, beef, milk products, and also from person to person contact, they can come. Contact with infected animals also transmits this. Then typhoidal uh, salmonella is very is increasing in developing uh, countries. Area with lack of clean water and adequate sanitation is the focus uh, area for spread of this disease, and transmission is through fecal oral route. Then, disease symptoms in human beings that is gradual insect onset of uh, fever that is which reaches up to 40 degrees centigrade, then chills, abdominal pain. Rashes, nausea, anorexia means lack of uh, uh, lack of appetite. There is uh, diarrhea, constipation, etc. Headache and dry cough. This diagnosis can be done on the basis of the history, signs and symptoms, isolation, many serological tests, molecular methods, and prevention and control is adequate, adequate proper treatment of the water supply. This, the water is uh, one of the main sources of uh, this salmonella other uh, than uh, milk, proper dispo disposal of the waste material or the waste effluent, 
hygienic measures, pasteurization of milk, control of flies, because this is uh, arthropods or insects are also called carrier of the salmonella. Then treatment of the affected pop uh, population at risk. Then other organism, which is also bacterial in nature, is Coxiella burnetii, which causes Q for fever in human beings. And this is this also comes spreads through the milk. And this organism is very, very sturdy organism. This can be viable for two years in environment at 20 degrees centigrade. And this resists also the common disinfectants very much. Uh, this can survive in cottage cheese, cheese for 42 days, whereas in yogurt, it is killed in 24 hours because of production of acid in the yogurt. All these features make this organism very sturdy and of great public health importance. And human beings which are having uh, very frequent and direct contact with animals, like veterinarians, animal handlers, dairy farmers, they are at high risk of this. And but this disease is rarely fatal, but like uh, brucellosis, if it goes undiagnosed, because undiagnosed, this may result to fatality, but in very, very rare cases, this results into fatality. Uh, there is a risk of Q fever from consumption of contaminated raw milk, sheep, cattle, goat, cats, and different other uh, animals. They can carry this bacteria, and apart from that, ticks and barns also carry uh, carry this. And uh, this this can enter from the from the environment of the animal farm to the milk and. Uh, through the animal or through through this cattle and buffalo, it can come also in its environment. Also, it can come to milk and again to, and finally to the human beings. And this is also a very long uh, means, um, a very very long uh, occurring like tuberculosis, uh, long occurring disease, and requires treatment for also for a very longer uh, duration. Mostly, human infection could be by inhalation of the infected of the infected dust of the fecal material in the environment of the uh, or the premises of the animal form. Symptoms, only about one half of the people show the symptoms. Otherwise, it's is un, uh, asymptomatic. For patients who become ill, first symptoms of the Q fever resemble flu and may include fever, chills, sweats, coughing, uh, headache, weakness, and this may really progress to other uh, vital organs like liver, nervous system, and heart valve. Sometimes uh, this can result into death, but very rare. Then foot of and mouth disease, which is a very common disease. We see many outbreak uh, in, in, in the animals, and this is a disease of great economic importance because we are not able to export our surplus milk and milk products due to this disease in the international market. But this disease also affects human beings, although very rarely this comes through, uh, through milk. And the symptoms are fever, difficulty swallowing, heat and dryness in mouth, and rarely in fingers also. So we should be careful. We should not consider this as only a disease of animals. This also can affect human beings, especially when there is an outbreak. While handling the animals, we should be very careful. Even veterinarians think that this is not a zoonotic disease, but rarely it can cause if the, this is infected with high doses of uh, the virus. This can affect the human beings also, the veterinarians also then diagnosis as commonly through the history signs and symptoms then complement fixation test ally size prevention and control is adequate heat treatment of the milk close contact with the animals should be avoided then this immunization disinfection of premises equipments and vehicles etc 
other disease which is uh, affecting many many animals starting from the fellow then human beings uh, even wild animals tiger lion bear all they affect this is a ubiquitous type of organism and it comes through milk also uh, through consumption of raw milk anthrax can which is a very very fatal disease can also come through causative agent is bacillus anthracis and source of contamination is infected animal any animal can be there but here we are talking about the milk this can come through milk in some cases and there are many forms of this disease most common is cutaneous form where appearance of small pharyncles occurs and pneumonia which may result into fatality also then intestinal form is also there The diagnosis can be on the basis of uh, clinical symptoms and from history, then isolation and demonstration of the organism, guinea pig in a collection, indirect hemagglutination test, as well as precipitation test. Uh, the prevention and control of uh, this anthrax would be proper. This uh, this carcasses, the dead animal which has died due to anthrax, should be should be uh, buried very deep and uh, th this carcass should not come into contact with any other animal or human because this is a very 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 fatal even very small doses of this uh, bacteria can cause the disease even the number of you can say 10 to 20 bacillus number can be can spread the disease generally it, it is in lakhs but here this organism can spread even in small number, this can cause infection. And then this will infection of animal products that like hide, hide means uh, this uh, animal skin, wool, hair, etc. should be there. Dust control in factories, factories dealing with the animal products, vaccination of animals in high risk and high risk persons should be done, then medical care and management. So here I have uh, given you an uh, uh, an overview of uh, an overview of uh, all these diseases. You so the most common the most common criteria to control and prevent such diseases is the boiling and uh, boiling of the milk. And uh, thankfully. We boil the milk again and again in uh, in our country, and that prevents us. But in many areas and in rural areas, the milk is also taken raw. Pasteurization also kills. But even uh, this boiling and pasteurization once is not sufficient. There could be cross contamination in in the refrigerator. Even the some other, especially for, uh, the salmonella organism, they come. They can come from some other food product to the milk, and milk is a very good vehicle and the medium for the growth of such organisms like uh, Samella, then Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, etc. So we should be careful of the hygiene even after the production of the safe milk. So uh, any uh, questions from the, your side, I'm uh, ready to tell. Participants have turned on your microphones. You can ask questions now. Or you can use the chat box to drop the question. I could see one question in the uh, chat box by uh, Dr. Tapas Kumar Patwanda. How much time is required to boil to boil a milk to kill microbes of most milk mold diseases? Here the you can say the uh, boiling temperature is 100 degree. Uh, if the uh, visibly if, from from the visual, if if we if we see the milk is boiling, that is sufficient to kill kill uh, this bacteria. You can say one to two minutes boiling is sufficient to 
kill all the pathogenic organism in the milk but it is not able to destroy the toxins the pasteurization temperature the temperature of pasteurization is uh, uh, there are different uh, means combinations 72 degrees centigrade for 15 seconds is sufficient to kill all the pathogens here we have uh, we considered uh, the mycobacterium tuberculosis as the most important one and the boiling temperature is 100 degrees which is much more than the pasteurization so the boiling even for uh, you can say one minute or even less than is able is sufficient to kill all the milk milk bond diseases any other question from participants uh, other question is by madhvi uh, by dr madhvi whether infected milk is the main main cause for tb no this is not the main cause for human tb but uh, um, this is uh, this uh, this is uh, the cause of about 10 percent of the human tb also but this is you can say neglected human tb um, is mainly for by the mycobacterium tuberculosis from man to man it separates mostly but this is through mycobacterium bovis and mycobacterium meritensis but this is important because this generally goes undiagnosed or um, you can say unrecognized so this is important even if it it is 10 percent or 15 percent so if there is no more question uh, uh, then i i thank dr sandeep for delivering a wonderful lecture on um, our view of milk board genetic diseases uh, and also thank thankful again, Dr. Durana, for accepting our request to present the lecture. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandeep. Uh, there uh, is a question. There is a question and uh, the lecture. lecture. Today we start at 2, 2 p.m. sharply because today we have meeting with the Director General ICR. So any one of you, if interested, can join the meeting so that you can also be verified. So thank you very much. For thank you, Dr. Rotra and all the participants for uh, listening Hello, patiently. Hello, sir. Thank you, sir. So over to Majid. Yeah, OK. If any questions, you can drop it in the chat. Then we can re refer to you via email. I think Sarah has mentioned his email on the presentation as well, I guess. Certain questions can be directed to him as well. I request all the participants to join back at 2, and we'll be starting uh, on around 2. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.